Uh, but before that, uh, I hope everybody had fun yesterday in uh, the hacking STEM experience. And I know a lot of you were on that tail end getting your screen beam. So we're really lucky today to have David Lopez from Action Tech uh, uh, Electronics to uh, talk a little bit more about uh, this product and how we can use it in the classroom. So, David. All right. Good morning, everybody. There we go. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm so excited. Hey, thank you. I'm waiting for my clock to come up because I want to make sure I get all the time. I've only got four minutes. Uh, ah, there we go. 25. I got 25 now. I'll wait. I'll wait for it to get to 15. There we go. All right. Uh, good morning, everyone. It's good to be here. Uh, so excited to get a chance to speak uh, with you. I'm actually a little sad, too, because uh, normally when I come to these events, I get to get to participate. And I didn't get to make a, a robotic hand yesterday, and I didn't get a really cool watch. Uh, so I'm really sad about that. But if it's, it's worth it, uh, if I get an opportunity to speak uh, with you today. So uh, what we're going to talk about, I'm going to get right into it, is the idea of classroom agility. And um, you know what? I'm just going to get this off here. What do you know? The idea of classroom agility. Right? And if you look, if you do a Bing search right now for classroom agility, nine out of the ten responses that you'll get are about dogs. Now, as much as I would love to have a dog up here running through hoops and, you know, jumping over hurdles and things like that, I love dogs. I have a dog at home. I don't know that he would enjoy this, but uh, that's not what we're going to talk about today when it comes to classroom agility. So we have a chance right now to kind of define this topic, to define this subject through your tweets and all that stuff that you're doing. Uh, so let's define it right now. Let's give it a definition. The ability to quickly, to move quickly and easily in the classroom. The ability to think and understand quickly in the classroom. So that's a good definition. But as teachers, we want to know what that looks like, right? So we ask the question, what does classroom agility look like? So I would think that if we walked into a classroom that has an agile teacher, that we would see that the only adult in the room it looks like they're loitering, right? They look like they're, they're moving around. They are moving around the classroom, going from answering individual questions, uh, making suggestions with, with a whisper. Okay, you guys, you're doing a great job, but I want you to make sure you, make sure you complete this particular task. Or they just do a simple gesture, right? Simple gesture, a hand on the shoulder, a pat on the back. And that's something that's part of classroom agility, retasking those who are off task and being able to actually have that ability to do that. Um, and then for a second, calling the class together, okay, everybody, a little bit of momentary group instruction, and then we continue with the rest of the class, and being able to be very agile in the classroom. At the same time, the students should feel comfortable doing that as well, right, when it comes to classroom agility. Your students should also feel comfortable moving around the room, being able to get the resources they need, ask another group for, uh, for help with what they're doing, maybe be able to uh, say, hey guys, how did you get to that point? How did you get to that resource? Or where did you find that information? And being agile in the classroom. And if I'm not agile as a teacher in, that, in those moments, my class is going to go wild, right? If I'm, the, if I'm sitting at my desk while the rest of the class is being agile, that looks really crazy. But if I am actually the one being agile with them, that allows me to be able to control and be able to uh, manage my class properly. Would you agree? Yeah, right? So, but when I look at that, that allows me to see it has an active environment. I'm, allowed, I'm looking at be the behaviors in the classroom. I'm able to see what those behaviors are and, and adapt to those behaviors with consequences if I need to. And it really follows the ABC model of learning. If you look at that model of learning, having an active environment that elicits correct and rapid responses, having behaviors that are easier to observe because I am being agile in my classroom. Right? Because I, I can see a group over here that's talking, but maybe if, I do, if I'm not over there with them listening to what they're saying, I have no idea they're talking about the party they went to last night. Right? So uh, being agile really helps me to be able to do that. And then when it comes to consequences, I can actually, uh, easier to develop those consequences, whether it's positive reinforcement or negative reinforcement, you know, but, and, and different sorts of, of, um, of stimulus that I want to be able to, to do in my classroom, I can do that better because I am agile in my classroom. So the problem is, 
does classroom agility stop when I'm using technology? A lot of times, absolutely yes, right? Because I, I sit here and I've got my battle station as a teacher, right? I've got my, my computer here and I've got my, my document camera that I use as a glorified overhead sometimes. And I have my printer maybe and I have my projector and this is my battle station and this is where I teach. This is what I do. And, and I have my, I'm, I'm even doing my OneNote stuff here. I'm doing my inking. I'm doing all that stuff. But the problem is I'm absolutely stuck here in one place. Maybe I have an interactive whiteboard. And I'm up here writing on my interactive whiteboard. I've got the magic wand. And I'm up here doing all these great things. But I'm still stuck to the front of the room. I'm no longer being agile because technology has kind of gotten in the way. Which can be a problem, right? If we want to have that agile classroom, we want to be able to do the kinds of things that, that we're talking about, it's a necessity for me to get out of the front of the classroom. That idea of being, not being the sage on the stage anymore, but being the guide on the side, right? Those things we've talked about for years now with the, the flipped classroom, those kinds of things, technology can kind of get in the way of that if I want to use it in my classroom. Because that's, frankly, that's why we're here, right? We're here to learn how to better use technology in our classrooms. And Microsoft has done some great things with that. So the question then we ask is, how can technology enhance classroom agility? And that's where some of the great tools that Microsoft has provided for us when we look at things like, uh, let's, let's look at things like formative assessment tools, like Excel Survey or or Office 365 forms, or any number of formative assessment tools that you might have at your fingertips. Those are great things that allow me to have what, I, what we call instructional agility, right? Where I can easily gather information, I'm gathering data, I'm able to uh, act on that data, I'm able to give consequences because of that data, and that really helps me be instructionally agile. And Microsoft has done a fantastic job, and I've been, I've been fortunate enough to be a part of this program for... Uh, for several years now, and, and I, I talked with, uh, with Helen Gooch. You guys know Helen? A lot of you from the U.S. know Helen. Uh, Helen and I and Kim West, who who's, was here with you guys today, we were some of the original fellows here in the U.S., uh, Kim and I and Helen were. And we were, we, it's so neat to see where this program has come but, and see all these wonderful tools that you guys have at your fingertips, that we have at our fingertips. But if I take it further and look at tools like like OneNote, right? I can use my tools like OneNote. If I can take a pen, I can pick it up and I can, and I can do things like student observation, right? Where I take my pen, I take my tablet device and I'm walking around the room. Maybe I'm saying, okay, that looks great. I, I want to take a quick note about what these four students are doing because I might want to pull them aside for some individualized instruction. And I can write those notes down and I can keep that to myself and be able to use that. Maybe I use that for parent-teacher conferences, things like that, right? And that's one note gives the ability to do that kind of thing and be agile in my classroom. But I want to take that a step further and what we're doing with Microsoft Tools and ScreenBeam, right? So if I am able to do things like take my device that I'm teaching with, maybe I'm using OneNote, and put it in front of a student and say, here you go, why don't you show us how you did that problem? That allows me to do that because I'm allowed to show that and display in my classroom, right? And it's all being displayed wirelessly. And shame on you if you did not pick up a free device yesterday, I might give you another opportunity to get one at some point by the registration table after this. All right. Shame on you if you didn't get one. And if you didn't, you, did anybody use it last night in their hotel room? All right. Excellent. Watch Netflix. Um, but, but we've given you the ability now to do that in your classroom wirelessly, right? So now I can... I can have students share what they've learned. I can have them share their screen, right? I can have them say, okay, I want to see what anybody in this room right now, what I could do is I could quickly disconnect and anybody who has their machine open, you have your Windows 10, your Surface Pro open, I could say, let's take a look at what you're doing. And I could show that OneNote right on the screen, right? Quickly and easily be able to do that. Now, I'm not going to do that right now. But, but the, the capability is there because of what the tools that Microsoft has provided in Windows 10 and using our screen, the screen beam technology to be able to do that. I can even have students teach what they've learned, right? Call a performance of understanding. I can have a student say, okay, 
I want you to share how you solve that problem or how you diagram that sentence and what your thought process was by stopping sharing my screen and saying, okay, you go ahead and share. I was just in, in Sweetwater in Chula Vista, California last week, and the students were like, holy cow, how, can I, how did I do that? And I was showing them exactly how that worked, and they were blown away by the capabilities they had to be able to share their screen with the rest of the class and just teach from their desk, the student was. And what do you know if this might happen in your classroom if all of a sudden a student shows you how to do something and their thought process that everybody all of, a sudden, all of a sudden gets it because you've given them an opportunity to teach the rest of the class just from their desk. So it's a really great, some really great possibilities there. But I want to take it even a step further and look at what we've done with Windows 10 and, and, and touch screens. If you're looking at having a touch screen in your room or your school district has touch screens, normally to have a touch screen display, you have to have a USB cord connected to the touch screen right, in order for that to work, because the touch screen is essentially a giant mouse. What we've done with the power of Windows 10 and something called UIBC, which is called User Input Back Channel, is allow you to take that USB cord and connect it to our screen beam device. And now if a student is sharing their screen, you'll notice that right there, I could take my, my pen and go up to the touch screen, and I could actually write, start writing on that touch screen. Let's say I'm doing photosynthesis, H2O plus CO2, plus sunshine equals oxygen. And guess where all that inking shows up? Anybody? It shows up on the student's screen. <laughs> Holy cow. Right? All that inking shows up on the student's screen, so you're actually able to control that student's screen. And actually, we were talking with some teachers from Canada. I was talking with, about John Hattie. Anybody heard of John Hattie and descriptive feedback? Right? The ability to do descriptive feedback right there in the front of your room, that is classroom agility, right? That's classroom agility to be able to do that quickly and easily. And if you haven't gotten it yet, if you haven't gotten it yet, classroom agility is formative assessment. Formative assessment is classroom agility. So formative assessment is not an event on the calendar or an item on the syllabus. It should be a constant presence in the classroom. Would you agree? Yeah, it's a constant presence in the classroom. And if I am being agile in my classroom, not stuck at the front of the room, then I am being, I'm doing formative assessment, assessment constantly. Right? That's what I am doing and what I should be doing with this technology that I've been given. It kills me when I see this, the stuff up here just stuck here and, and connected because I know what the power of this technology gives you, even with adults in the classroom, right? Even with adults in the classroom, I can do this. So technology... And agility should be not separated like that. They should be together. So even if I look at the idea of classroom design, right, I have the ability to go from lecture mode up here, right, to now I can do some proximity control, right, and I can continue with my instruction while I'm walking around, and all of a sudden, it's okay that she's on her phone, but I don't have to continue. I don't have to stop my instruction, right? All I'm doing is doing proximity control and moving around the room. I can go to proximity control mode. I can say, hey, can you go ahead and advance that slide for me? And I can continue with my instruction without stopping. And then I can go to small, give me that. <laughs> then I can go to small group work while controlling content for the class. Guess what? If you take a look at my screen, is it the same as what's up there right now? No, it's not because I'm in extended screen mode. So I could be watching a basketball game right now while doing this PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> but I have the capability to be able to do that quickly and easily. I could be showing a PowerPoint while I'm using fluid math with my students at, a, at the kidney table. Right? I could be doing all that because it doesn't matter where my desk is. I could just show a video from my desk. Then I can go back to lecture mode. And guess what? Now it changes. Take a look at that. That's morph, by the way. Now all of a sudden it doesn't matter how my classroom is designed. I can move my desks however I want to. I can even go into a classroom of the round. <laughs> Get a little crazy. But it doesn't matter where my desk is, it doesn't matter where my computer is because Microsoft and Windows 10 and ScreenBeam have given me the capability to do that. So the last thing I'll have to say, you guys are here because you are ambassadors for what you are doing in your countries. Why did we give you devices yesterday? Why did we give you $20,000 worth of devices yesterday? Because we want you to take it back and use it. Don't keep it to yourself. And you say to yourself, 
well, all the teachers that I work with, they only, uh, they only use PowerPoint, you know, and that's what they use. Well, you know what? Let's start with that. Guess what? If I'm walking around my classroom using PowerPoint, guess what happens all of a sudden if I'm doing that? Your ears as a student are now focusing in different places. Your eyes are moving around the room. Your neck is straining. Say, he's short. Why can't I see him? Right? Wandering out, wandering around, and you're, all of a sudden there's physiological responses to you doing a PowerPoint presentation. That's a big deal. Right? So don't keep it to yourself. Go back, use it, and benefit from it. Right? I've done this whole presentation up here in a crowded room full of people with two seconds worth of setup. And that's how good this stuff is. And that's what we're continuing to get better. Right? So thank you so much for your opportunity to speak with you today. I was so excited about being here. You guys take this back and do great things with it. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you so much. That was really, really cool. And I know that everyone will go back and tell others about this really cool program and how they can use it in their classroom. They better.